final review is Archer Danger Island or Season 9, whichever one you want to call it. And I'm going to get the positives out of the way first. It's a very funny show. The animation is very unique. I really like the animation of this because it mixes in CGI with hand-drawn stuff and the actual style of it. The backgrounds are really detailed and intricate. The characters have a really stand out from the backgrounds. It's really well done. It looks very gorgeous at times. And it's still a very funny show, despite the fact that it's gone on for nine seasons and the characters are all kind of repeating themselves at times. Also, the voice acting, brilliant again. I really can't fault any of the voice actors in this show. So let's get on to the negatives here, because even though this is still a really good show and I really like it, it has gone on for nine seasons now and it needs to end because it's kind of losing the plot. The Let's go back to season seven and how that ended. So slight spoilers if you've never watched Archer. Season seven ended with Archer falling into a coma and that's literally where we've left it off. We're in season nine now. We still don't know what the hell happened after that because season eight and nine are in his mind. He's dreaming all of this. So none of this is relevant or important as far as I'm aware. And there's not even a single mention of him being in a coma in this season. So you might even forget that. And it looks like season 10, which I think is meant to be the final season, isn't going to address that at the beginning at least. I don't want to spoil it or anything. But it looks like it's going to do a similar thing that it's done with season 8 and 9. But that's not to say that what's happened in season 8 and 9 is bad, because it's really allowed them to do different things and it's really interesting and fun. But it does feel like it's gone off track a bit and it needs to gear it in and get back to it being a spy comedy show, which is what it originally was. So yeah, I feel like it's lost its focus a bit. But it's still, it's still really good. And yeah, I would recommend it if you're an Archer fan, because there are some really good moments in this season. Sometimes it does get a bit silly, but yeah, that's a really minor quibble, and it's kind of what you expect from a show like this. And that's reviews. If you've liked what you've seen, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to me on YouTube, give me a follow on Twitch, get involved in the chat, I'll have a little hangout after the show if anyone's there. Although I might be having problems streaming, but I'm not too sure. And yeah, I'm Grant Burton. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore Grant Burton, or you can go to forcebygrant.wordpress.com for all my written reviews. I did write a review of Sharp Objects, so check that out if you want more details. And just so you know, I think I'm a far better writer than I am a talker, so the review might make a bit more sense. But I don't know. Before I end the show, I've just got a couple of little things I want to address. A few weeks ago, I'd done a topic on the next James Bond. And I'll admit it, I put that together last minute because the news about Idris Elba broke on the Friday. I record this on a Saturday morning and I just thought it would be a good topic, but I didn't really put the amount of work and effort into it that I would have liked to have. So I missed something. And in that topic, I talked about what I would do for the next James Bond, which is to set it in the 60s, have a female James Bond, and I suggested Natalie Dormer as the role. I still stand by all of that. I think Natalie Dormer would be great in that. I think it would be really interesting to do a female Bond in the 60s to address things like gender politics and so on. But I just want to throw another name into this as a potential James Bond, one that I think would actually be better than Natalie Dormer, and that's Vanessa Kirby. I've spoke about her in the past. I think she would be brilliant as a female James Bond. And not sure if she would do it because of her relationship in... Mission Impossible Fallout, which is a spy series as well. Maybe she doesn't want to be typecast or something like that. But yeah, really good actress. She'd really do a good job as James Bond. Next thing I want to address is this week they announced the release date and details of the DC streaming service called DC Universe. And it comes out in September. I think it's the 15th and I think it's just in the US so far. So yeah, just be aware of that if you're a big DC fan. But yeah, I'm not hyped about this at all. Titans does not look good. I'm not that interested in the comic book stuff that they're doing because they're only releasing a few comic books at a time, it seems. And some of the other content isn't coming out till 2019 and beyond. And yeah, I'm not sure how many people are going to be jumping onto this. Keeping with DC though, the final thing I want to talk about is Alec Baldwin being cast and then 
dropping out of the Joker movie starring Joaquin Phoenix. So, they wanted him to play Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's father, and they wanted to do a really weird and bizarre take on it by having him be a Donald Trump-like character. So, I completely understand why Alec Baldwin didn't want to do this. In recent years, he's famously portrayed Donald Trump on Saturday Night Live, doing a pretty good impression of him. It's really quite funny. And, yeah, I don't blame him at all for not wanting to do that in a film, because you don't want to be known so much for being a Donald Trump impersonator, especially when you're an actor of the caliber of Alec Baldwin. So, yeah, not surprised by this at all. And he has a suggestion. Instead of doing a Joker movie, which will probably ruin the character by getting rid of all of the mystique surrounding that character, regardless of how good an actor Joaquin Phoenix is, regardless of all the big names like Robert De Niro being attached to this film, why don't you just go and do a Batman movie? A one that everyone wants. Everyone wants this Batman movie. The one being written and directed by Matt Reeves and who knows who it's starring. Just get Ben Affleck on the phone, ask him if he's going to do it, and get this movie into production. Because it's all anyone really wants. It's something that should have happened quite a while ago. They probably should have done it before Batman v Superman. And it's getting a little silly now how long it's taken them to do a Batman movie in this universe. There's also the problem with that this Joker movie is not connected to this universe at all. It's its own thing. That's going to confuse a lot of people depending on how they market it. Because... We already have a Joker in this universe, and yeah, it's Jared Leto and he's crap as the Joker, but still, it's going to cause some confusion. But yeah, I'm getting a bit into a rant because I'm really not happy with the DCEU. I can't remember what the official name is that they gave it, but it was something silly. But yeah, if you've enjoyed watching this, I'm Grant Burton. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore Grant Burton, or go to forcebygrant.wordpress.com for all my written reviews. I wrote a review of Sharp Objects this week, so check that out. And... On YouTube, subscribe to my channel. I'm aiming for 100 subscribers at first. I'm slowly, slowly getting there. Hopefully I can get there in the end. Give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. If you're watching this on Twitch, follow my channel and get involved in the chat. I'm about to do a post show if anyone's there. And I don't know if this is streaming very well at all. I'm not getting any details on my phone at the minute. So I think something might be up. But yeah. Until next time, I'm Graham Burton. Hope you've enjoyed it, but I'm out.